The basic question that should be raised about any discussion with respect to the origin as well as the evolution of the human beings or Homo sapiens is about the diagnosis of this species that would be used. A theory that makes use of the classical concept of Homo sapiens would be needed to span the entire Pleistocene history about the human genus. On the other hand, the more restricted utilization of the authors like that of Schwartz and Tattersall would be requiring a limited focus in the smaller portion of the Pleistocene fossils. The Homo sapiens usually share certain traits like that of the high neurocranium, small face, under the influence of frontal bone, rounded or oval across the lateral profile, true chin, smaller discontinuous suborbital tori, extended the postnatal growing period, life history, narrow trunk and pelvis, along with shorter pubic rami. The anatomical specification of the Homo sapiens and its lineage would therefore be possible from the specific features like retrocessive face, cranial globularity, mental osseum development, basicranial flexion, pelvic shape and dental microstructure. Along with these features, the distinctive morphologies consisting of the elements with respect to the anatomy of the inner ear have been increasingly well formed in the Homo sapiens. With respect to cranial vault, the distinctive shape of the parietal region in the Homo sapiens is also highly striking. It therefore makes a significant contribution towards globularity across both the occipital as well as lateral views. Basicranial flexion consists of a complex structure. However, the Homo sapiens appear distinctive through various measurements in this aspect as well. The dental microstructure, particularly with the incoming of the synchrotron and micro-CT technology, has not only been demonstrating strengthened ontogeny of the Homo sapiens, but also had been unveiling several differences between the Homo sapiens in comparison to the other hominin creatures in terms of striking features like the enamel thickness as well as the overall enamel shape with the dental junction. The second important question that tends to concern the process of evolution of the Homo sapiens is related to the fact whether it was a gradual or punctuational process. As per the hominin record of the Middle Pleistocene in Africa, these are really rare and outdated. Therefore, it is not possible to determine whether the fossils like Homo kibish or Herto represent the earliest forms of the traits that we are able to associate with the extant species. In Europe, recent redating about the fossils of Cima de los Huesos to around 400 Ka had suggested that several features of the Neanderthal, especially along the face, teeth and jaw, were well developed at that time. The European record went on to indicate that a gradual, not entirely ordered, accretion with respect to the Neanderthal synapomorphies. Therefore, at the present state, one cannot determine that if there existed a symmetry between Africa and Europe with respect to the appearance of distinctive traits by the Neanderthal as well as the modern human species. Finally, while considering the evolution of the Neanderthal as well as the modern traits of the human being, Frankos had found that there existed a symmetry with respect to the changes in both of the lineages, as the modern one had derived more than the Neanderthal species. The third question is with respect to the property of the last ancestor of the Homo sapiens as well as that of the Neanderthal origins. A recent study which makes use of the geometric morphometrics over various crania for virtually reconstructing the LCA of the modern humans as well as that of the Neanderthals had found the existence of the Afro-European species. The fourth question has been followed by the previous ones. Once the modern human, as well as the Neanderthal lineages, had begun to evolve, whether more ancient species in Africa and Eurasia died away or if they persisted with their descendants for a long period. As this type of question might pose a major issue for any form of phylogenetic, cladistic or taxonomic criteria, there has been the existence of some growing evidence about the survival of the earlier middle morphologies of the Pleistocene. In addition to this, the recent evidence with respect to the later episodes of Pleistocene about the introgression between various human lineages across Eurasia and Africa has revealed that the comparable exchanges of the genetics could have been taking place in the Pleistocene. African Middle Early Pleistocene Homo sapiens Fossil Record the available fossil record for the reconstruction of the evolution of the Homo sapiens in regions of Africa has been currently sparse and outdated. 
This theory is dominated by several materials and factors that arise from the sedimentary basins containing fossils records in East Africa. Several huge expanses of West and Central Africa were inhabited at the time of the later Pleistocene. This has shown by the evidence of the presence of artifacts. However, there has not been a single fossil until now that would help in the identification of the type of early inhabitants in this region. Therefore, the presently available record can be considered to be highly biased as well as unrepresentative with respect to the whole continent. More detailed and wider compilations upon the material as well as its dating could be found in Tattersall and Schwartz as well as in that of Wood, Millard and Klein. North and Northwest Africa In Morocco, Later Pleistocene archaeological evidence with changes from middle non aterian Stone Age or Paleolithic Age to those of marine isotope stage in the Aterian has continued along some regions. The infamous Jebel Erhoud structure or cave got exposed during the operations taking place in some buried mine. Since the time of 1961, this cave has produced several faunal remains along with MSA, non-Aterian archaeology, as well as seven fossil Homo sapiens in addition to several specimens. The fossil remains of the humans have been present from low range along the stratigraphic sequence, a calvaria, along with a mandible that resembles that of some child. The cranium has been observed to be relatively long along with smooth and angular contours. There is the presence of a strong supraorbital tors inferior to the domed frontal along with a cranial vault that is parallel sided and a large capacity. The face seems large and broad especially along the upper dimensions along with flat cheekbones as well as a broad and low nose with an inferior alveolar prognathism. There is a greater projection of the occipital along with modern frontal and parietal shape and equally firm supraorbital development. Though the comparisons of the contours of the midline recommend about the affinity of the Homo sapiens towards cranial vaults, various kinds of studies have suggested that these indicate closer similarities to the recent samples of Homo sapiens. Both of these display some kind of phonetic similarities to the early species like that from the Skoll, Herto and Quafsek. However, these lack the expansion of the upper parietal. In the cranial vault, there is a resemblance to Simma fossils along with the early Neanderthals. The immature JI3 mandible represents a gracile body along with huge posterior teeth and might show anterior chin development. The JI4 is also a partial humerus, even after its immaturity, as there is an immature pelvic portion. On the overall basis, there is enough preservation of the GI1 for indicating that it is not used to represent the modern Homo sapiens anatomically. However, there are hints of basicranal flexion that is present in the relationship of the vault and the face. JI2 and 3 appear quite difficult for assessing as they are quite incomplete. However, the teeth portion of Arhud 3 has undergone synchrotron analysis that suggests the age of their death to around 8 years along with the development pattern of the modern Homo sapiens. At the same time, the ESR analysis of the both enamel has suggested the age to be around 160 Ka, that is very likely as the minimum figure. The Kabibat Rabat hominin that originates from Morocco comprises of a fragmented cranial vault along with complete lower and upper jaws. The larger teeth represent the typical specimens of the Middle Pleistocene from the regions of North Africa. However, the mandible contains elements of the mental trigone along with the vertical symphysis as the occipital portion seems to be quite high as well as rounded. But the person seems to be subadult. Therefore, Caution must be implemented while interpreting the morphology of the same. Faunal correlation has placed the rabbit Homo sapiens specimen along the latter middle Pleistocene. Morocco cave of the famous Dar el Sultan II has resulted in the production of some immature calvaria along with some adolescent mandible as well as a part of the skull with linked hemimandible. An interior vault of the DES5 is quite high and tends to be very large. It is strong but partitioned over a low suborbital torus with a flat face and low broad nose. 
there have been indications of the presence of the canine fossa along with alveolar prognathism. Even the mandible, along with the preserved detention, also appears to be very large. However, several illustrations tend to be highly deceptive about the indication of the lack of chin. The region of the same seems to be broken. The DS5 has rather a modern-looking bone shape and face. However, both are quite large in shape. The caves of Tamara and El Alia in Morocco have also produced the fragments of the cranial fossils of the Homo sapiens from the Aterian or MSA contexts. The material of Alia consists of a large teeth and maxilla. However, the preserved morphology of the cheek appears to be rather flat and non-Neanderthal in nature. However, much of the same Homo sapiens species is not preserved. The fossils found in the Tamara represent some kind of vault fragments and lack a mandible as well as a supraorbital tors. A good number of several other sites of the Aterian have resulted in dental material. The cave named Zohra, located at El Harahora, has produced a canine along with mandible during the excavations. The dental samples of the Aterian technique usually represent the large dimensions in comparison to the later Pleistocene Homo sapiens as well as the Neanderthals. However, a smaller and thicker enamel along with anterior dentition represent more of the modern traits. As the crown morphologies tend to be quite complex, these resemble the materials like quafse and skull in a more close pattern than that of the Neanderthals. In comparison to the larger and complex morphology of the molar specimens that have been found in the Aterian material of Morocco, the only portion of the teeth present in the fragments of the posterior mandible have been recovered from the deposits of the level Loisomosterian within the Libyan cave along the Hau of Ta in 1950 tend to be simple and small crowned. The fragments of the mandible appear to be low rami and there is no evidence about the retromolar spaces. Another possible specimen associated with MSA that tends to lack the dental complexity and size of the material related to the Moroccan Aterian is the fragmentary segment and the cranium of a child that has been recovered within some sand deposits on top of the Taramza Hill in Egypt. Much of cranial vault has been preserved for indicating the modern shape. However, the presence of postcranial skeleton has been quite friable and only some of it is able to survive. The exact MSA age of this specimen cannot be confirmed through means of direct dating. Southern Africa The type of Florisbad cranium has been observed at the open locality across South Africa in the year 1932. This was found as stratified along a long sequence that remains poorly dated until a long time. This remained the same until ESR had provided an estimate of the age on enamel fragment that was obtained from the human fossil and the age was approximated to be 259 ka. The bone of the frontal region is observed to be wide, receding and thick along with the supraorbital torus tending to be high with some form of lateral reduction. The face is available incomplete, however it quite broad along the upper portions with some canon fossa expression. In the reconstruction of R. Clark, the face appears to be low to the great breadth and also allows for an entire anterior dentition. Florisbad has been sometimes observed to be the morphological alliance to the Broken Hill and at other times a representation of the later middle Pleistocene species of the Homo sapiens or a precursor to the Homo sapiens or even as an LCA of the modern clades and Neanderthals. The human fossil of the Clysis river mouth has been obtained over a span of above 40 years in several stratigraphic contexts of the MSA from an interrelated complexity of the caves along the southeastern regions of South Africa. The material found here tends to be highly fragmentary and is used to represent the maxillary, mandibular, postcranial and facial as well as cranial vault. The mandibles represent a great variance and range from chinless and large to the ones summer modern morphology to another range of small and robust corpus having small teeth. The presence of two maxillary specimens reveals about the variation that exists in size with an isolated zygomatic of the modern concepts. An apparent frontal fragment of an adult represents a great interorbital breadth with a centrally suborbital profile. 
The presence of a few postcranial bones that have been recovered indicates the existence of the individuals with a small body. Although the proximal ulna had been found to have relatively large joint surfaces, some of the elements of the assemblages of the clases have clearly conformed to the pattern of the modern Homo sapiens. However, several other materials cannot be readily assigned to the various parts that are preserved. The border cave in South Africa has resulted in a number of subfossil or fossil of the human remains of the MSA antiquity. During the time of the 1940s, an ulna fragment, a humerus, along with two metatarsals, had been recovered from the soil heap and these were argued upon preservations to be of the MSA age. The robusticity and size have suggested that these might be representing the same person because in the Board Cave 1, a partial skull was also observed. The skull consisted of only the upper parts of the face as well as a wart. However, enough material has been preserved for showing the large size, a small development of the supraorbital domed frontal along with large interorbital breadth. Though this appears to be the modern aspect, the large size along with the upper and frontal facial expression tends to discriminate the same from the recent human population. A BC2 indentalus mandible has also been recovered at the same time and this appears to be small as well as lightly built and proves to be assignable to the modern Homo sapiens in anatomical terms as well as on symphysal morphology. The skeleton of the infant, BC3, has appeared to be representing the Homo sapiens and plays an important role in the association with red pigment and conal shells. Just like BC2, even BC5 and its partial mandible tends to be small and represents a modern morphology. Moreover, its importance gets enhanced by the direct methods of ESR dating that helps to provide the estimated age of around 75 ka. East Africa the ES Li Springs cranium was initially discovered by the tourists after several changes had taken place along the lake levels at the regions of West Turkana in Kenya. The cranium of the discovered fossil had suffered years of anterior erosion along with the face. However, enough of it has been preserved for revealing the archaic morphology. The particular vault that has been found appears to be long as well as broad in an inferior manner with a limited expansion of the upper parietal region in rear view. There is some evidence of mere frontal keeling as well, however cranial buttressing has not been strongly expressed. The occipital structuring is slightly rounded with a minimum development of the occipital torus. Though it is heavily eroded, the structure of the face appears to hold a resemblance to some of the later Middle Pleistocene. The crania of Africa has been comparatively short, broad and flat and there is evidence of some development with respect to the canine fossa. Though ES11693 had been discovered along with some faunal remains, the absence of any proper context or linked archaeology has indicated the remains to be undated. Several mandibular and fragmentary cranial fossils were recovered from the sediments that border the Lake Eassi situated in Tanzania since the time of the 1930s. Probable association of the same with the Archaeolian artifacts have suggested the fact that an earlier and not middle Pleistocene age, however limited U Sirius and ESR age, have estimated from the fauna linked with frontal 7 suggests the age be around 88 or 130 ka. The ARC-1 is represented in a projecting suborbital torus towards its frontal, while the occipital is considered to be more modern with respect to the torus formation in comparison to the strong development of the ARC. Second, the conditions in terms of a fragment of the material along with complexities of reconstruction have limited the availability of information beyond the indications about the specimens were not assignable to the anatomical modern Homo sapiens, even after the later Pleistocene date had suggested some of them. The hominid findings of the Ngaloba Laetoi 18 had been recovered from the beds of Ngaloba along the Laetoli region in Tanzania. The particular cranium might date from the later Middle Pleistocene. This is comparatively long as well as low, with elongated or receding bone on the frontal end. This comes as rounded towards the rear as well as lateral views, along with the minimal development of the occipital torus. 
However, on the anterior side, there is the presence of a prominent, still thin layer of the supraorbital torus. The region of the occipital is known for the resemblance of Neanderthals with respect to the juxtamastoid and mastoid eminences. Its face is not properly articulated within the vault, however, it is evidently low, flat and broad along the mid-face with the presence of canine fossae and gives way to the subnasal regions. The possible reconstruction of the same by Cohn has confirmed the gracility of the entire face, however, it suggests more height in comparison to the other depictions of the same. The workers, like Reitmeier, have gone to suggest the LH-18 as comparatively modern, however, it doesn't conform to the modern Homo sapiens anatomically in the overall morphology, in spite of the available parietal and facial shape. The three fossil hominins of the Homo kibish have been discovered in the year 1967 as separate contexts and localities. Homo I was considered to be a partial skeleton along the member I present in the kibish formation, while Homo II represents a desolated surface findings of the calvaria, and then Homo III represents the frontal fragment from the member III. In the most recent times, an American expedition has relocated the genuine sites of both the Omer I and Omer II. This has recovered several human materials which include various parts of the Omer I along with additional fossils. The skull of the Omer I and its assemblage is the main subject of various reconstructions. However, all of these conquer towards the indication of a rounded, high as well as voluminous vault in the cranial region with some occipital morphology of the Homo sapiens and its configurations. The dentition, mandible and the face appear to be greatly fragmentary, however, represent a mental eminence and canine fossa. The postcranial fossils include that of the limb bones that represent the modern concept, however, with some distinctions that have been noted in the skull Quafsech, Neanderthal, as well as in Upper Paleolithic people, along with some proportions that appear to be comparable with some of the current East Africans. The Oma II, too, has a large brain case, along with the presence of some endocranial capacity of around 1435 cubic centimetres. However, it tends to be narrower with the parallel sides in contrast to the expanded parietals of the superior regions. There is also the presence of a great angled occipital region that bears a high occipital torus. There is also the display of the parasagittal flattering on either side of the midline keel. Contrasting to these features, the presence of the supraorbital torus is composed of a weak prominence towards the anterior end of the broad, flat, as well as receding bone in the frontal zone. The respective ages of the Oma I, as well as that of Oma II, are considered to be the sources of a great controversy. However, these now appear to have well established at around 195 ka. The classification of the Oma I and Oma II is quite difficult. It is quite evident that the Omer I could be assigned to the modern Homo sapiens category from the fossilized parts. However, Omer II could be tentatively placed along the clade with respect to the supraorbital reduction. The two individual human fossils that are found in the formation of Guomde in East Turkana during the times of 1971 and 1976 had consisted of a proximal fragment of a femur K and M to ER 1999, along with a partial skull numbered K and M ER 3884. The femur has been presented as a strongly built, however, seems of the modern aspect when it comes to the shaft shape as well as the cross section. On the other hand, the partial skull is seemingly a combination of the several characteristics found along the Omo Kibish I as well as two. This is large and high along with the presence of vertical walls. The presence of supraorbital torus has been found to be evenly projecting and thick. The direct dating of the uranium series of this particular material suggests the age be more than around 180 ka. Various dental as well as cranial human fossils have been recovered from a particular open site located at Herto in Ethiopia in the year 1997. The major part of the fossils consisted of the complete skull of an adult, immature calvaria and some other parts of the cranial vault, resembling an adult. All of the fossils are quite large in size, with the adult skull possessing a capacity of around 14,050 cubic centimetres. 
The overall length of the human skull has been found to be exceeding the range of 5,000 crania of the modern times. However, it tends to be relatively projecting and strong and is partitioned into central as well as lateral parts. However, the angled or occipital with a centrally sturdy torus is observed to be reminiscent to that of the fossils of the Jebel Arhound II and Broken Hill I. The rear part of the individual cranial fragments represents greater size along with robusticity in comparison to most of the complete cranium. The multivariate as well as the univariate analysis has shown that the combination of the traits of the skull of an adult makes it differentiated from the humans of the recent times. However, in terms of shape of the cranial, cranial angles, along with neurocranial globularity, these can be characterized as that of the Homo sapiens. But the addition of subspecific Edaltu, nomen, is not able to justify the same. The calvaria named Singa had been discovered along the block of various calcrete along the dry beds of the River Blue Nile situated in Sudan during the year 1924. It was considered to be quite notable for the presence of the strong bosses in the parietal regions. It consists of a well-marked, however being centrally divided along the supraorbital torus, upper face with wide spacing in the intraorbital regions, while the frontal being quite high. But the parietals tend to be highly short along with the occipital also being short and protruding without the display of any transverse torus. The natural breakage has allowed the removal of the filling of the endocranium with calcrete, thus revealing a greater portion of parietal bosses that have been thickened abnormally by the diploic bone. The presence of some endocranial mould has indicated the presence of the cranial capacity to be around 1400 cubic centimetres. At the same time, the asymmetry suggests the presence of the left-handed person. Moreover, the CT scanning also revealed the proof of pathology along the unilateral absence of the ear towards inner structure towards the right side along with spore at all. This suggested the presence of labyrinthine ossification that had taken place followed by some infection of the top labyrinth membrane. This occurrence might have taken place due to the presence of some blood-borne disease or infection or some kind of blood disorder like the anemia that would fit along with some explanations to be given to explain the process of parietal pathology. Due to the presence of its pathology, it has become quite unclear by the abnormality of the shape with respect to the calvaria. On the overall basis, the cranial morphology on the anterior side appears to be quite modern, however, the parietals seem to be abnormal which aim to prevent the taxonomic assessment in a proper manner. The fossil has been dated to an age of around 131 to 135 Ka by the process of u series along the sediments from the inside structure of the calvaria along with the ESR analysis on the linked faunal remains. Skull and Quafsech, Western Asia. Though not in Africa, the particular Levant has been clearly a representative of the ancient population that existed between Eurasia and Africa. Various materials like the Zutia fragment of the front facial area that could have been derived from the Middle Pleistocene, it remains quite difficult to be classified. Later diagnosable material that has been assigned to the MIS-5 is also believed to have some from Israel, as in the form of the Neanderthal skeleton of the Taboon I, along with the material from the caves of the Quafsech and Skull. The Mukharites skull site comprises of the small cave along with some larger external terrace and rock shelter with major hominin and archaeological remains to be coming from the latter. The fossils of the skull, that comprised of around 10 individuals, had been discovered during the time of 1931 and 1932, which was a part of a big rescue dig in the area of the Mount Carmel. There has been the presence of evidence about some individuals of the skulls being intentionally buried, which might explain the good preservation of their fossils. Both the skulls 4 as well as 5 have shared significant portions of the postcranial as well as cranial materials being preserved. The skull 9 comprises a greater fragmentary face and calvaria with some fragments of the pelvic as well as femur. In one stage, the skull fossils were believed to be just approximately 40 ka in their age. This calculation was based on lithic and faunal resemblances to the tapon. The middle later Paleolithic levels to around 40 ka had been due to the use of radiocarbon. 
but the material of the skull fossil is now dated to fall between the range of around 100 to 130 Ka with the help of the ESR, luminescence and new serious analysis. However, there exists the possibility that the skull 9 tends to be older than the rest of the fossils. This has been suggested by the morphology as well as the minimum stratigraphic position of the same. The first discoveries that were from the Quafsek cave, along with its terrace, had happened during the time of the 1930s. However, the deeper study of the same started during the year 1970, along with the publication of the proper specimens of the Quafsek fossils. By this time, several new excavations had been enlarging the samples associated with the Middle Paleolithic era to around 16 persons. The monographic work of Van der Mersch had been upon the still expanding series. This explained the fact that the Quafsek and skull samples had shared the associations of the Middle Paleolithic along with the appearance of the symbolic burials as well as the major skeletal similarities. As far as morphology was concerned, it was highlighted about the Homo sapiens and its affinity for the group of hominids from the mandibular and cranial shapes to even the pelvis as well as the limb bones. The metric, non-metric and morphometric analysis has always supported the view about the fact that the post-cranial, cranial and dental anatomy of the sample of the skull and quafsech had represented quite an early form of the Homo sapiens with primitive or robust features. With skull, the process of application of the ESR, luminescence as well as U-series methods of dating had placed the material of the Middle Paleolithic into MIS-5. The age estimates had ranged from around 90 to around 120 Ka. As the Quafsek and Skull series has revealed the derived characteristics in the postcranial and cranial anatomy that is shared with the recent humans and Upper Paleolithic, these also display a considerable amount of variation. These tend to differ in various aspects of the shape of cranial along with the morphology between and within the available samples. As there are greater ranges of error present upon the available manual dating of these sites, along with the archaeological and skeletal material, it can be considered quite possible in the current times for determining the fact whether skull and quafsex specimens are used for representing different kinds of samples from the same population of the variable MIS-5. This is because it is assumed within the Paleolithic studies the two striking populations that are separated by various millennia might tend to cover a long period at both the sites. Late Pleistocene Human Record in Africa During the span of last 25 years, the model of the African origin has dominated the discussions with respect to the evolution and origin of the Homo sapiens. However, several recent modifications have taken place with respect to the presence of introgression from several archaic humans, like that of the Denisovans and Neanderthals outside of Africa. The exact date of the origin of the Homo sapiens, as with this model, has also been changed, as with several new discoveries along with dating work. Therefore, it is now placed at around 200 Ka with respect to the first appearance of the Homo sapiens in the form of the skeleton of the Homo kibish one, as well as the younger form of Herto material. The usage has been quite consistent with the diagnosis of the Homo sapiens with a working definition that is delimited by the recent cranial and skeletal variation in characteristics like the domed neurocranium, enhanced basicranial flexion, reduction in projection and overall facial size. In the fact that the Homo sapiens is a comparatively younger species is accepted and that is distinct from the putative LSA and Neanderthals, then there are several possibilities for the exact evolution of the Homo sapiens. One possibility could be the limiting of the diagnosis of the species with respect to both Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis. These would be limited to the samples which used to share the morphological characteristics of various terminal members of the modern human class and the Neanderthals. The primitive members of the Homo sapiens and the Neanderthals had revealed only specific diagnostic characters about the terminal species that could be given an individual name of the species. If the particular is to be followed, the intermediate species between the Homo sapiens and the Neanderthals would be the Homo helmei on priority. 
given the fact that there are existing difficulties in differentiating the LSA from its early stages of origin and evolution with the respective Neanderthalenses and the Sapiens, it tends to further create the taxonomic divisions for the relatively short-lived individuals that would simply atomize the problems rather than solving them. Another possible option would be to make use of the looser definitions of the Homo sapiens along with the Homo neanderthalensis. This would be done for encompassing the various samples which would lie on the respective species after they got separated from the respective LCA. The earliest members of the modern Homo sapiens could be termed as archaic Homo sapiens. Similarly, the earliest members of the Homo neanderthalensis could be termed as the early Homo neanderthalensis. The time of the evolution of the Homo sapiens out of its chimpanzee human common ancestor can be dated to around 10 million years ago. The scientific study of the theory of human evolution is primarily concerned with the series of the development of the main genus Homo. It also involves the study of various other hominids like that of the great apes, gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos and all of the related hominids. The modern Homo sapiens are defined as the species of which the only existing extant subspecies is the human beings. The various species of the Homo sapiens, Idaltu, have now become extinct. The Homo neanderthalensis had become extinct some 30,000 years before and has been sometimes classified as the subspecies of the Homo sapiens. The genetic studies reveal that the functional DNA of the Neanderthals and that of the modern Homo sapiens had diverged some 500,000 years before. The anatomical structure of the modern human beings had first appeared along the fossil record found in Africa some 195,000 years before. The studies related to the molecular biology has given the evidence that time of divergence with respect of the common ancestor of the Homo sapiens of the modern times was some 200,000 years before. The broader study of the genetic diversity in Africa had founded the San people for expressing the largest genetic diversity that existed among the various distinct populations and thus made them one cluster of the ancestor population. The research had also located the exact origin of the human migration of the modern times along southwestern Africa and Angola and Namibia. The natural selection and its forces have still continued to be operating on the modern human populations with the availability of evidence that various regions of the display of genome and its directional selection to 15,000 years in the past.